these post state of origin team lists really throw up a bunch of spanners in the works as always and turns out it's not actually the state of origin you know players backing up or not backing up that's causing the majority of the issues here in this team list and we'll get into that very shortly and obviously a lot of this you know a lot of these team lists are going to depend on what happens in origin so be wary of how guys look in a game if they get through unscathed they have a, a head knock in there that kind of shakes them up a bit but they you know come back and play whether they get some type of ankle niggle, something like that. Just keep that in mind when you know, you're looking at you know, potentially trading this week. And let's get into these round 14 team lists right now. And our good man, Joey Manu, is in the front of the screen, which is great news for us heading into a very important round 14 to try and get a really strong, at least 16, and then maybe a you know, weaker 17th man on the park. So let's start with the Tigers and the Raiders. Just be aware that this one is two days after Origin and will you know, be less than 48 hours for you know, a couple of these guys backing up. And you know, one of those men is Hudson Young, who has been named to return, which you know, is good news. But if you know he doesn't, we need a little bit of a contingency plan. And just be aware, guys, that in teams that have multiple players playing Origin and they've named all of them to say it's three, they get an extra reserve. And then if it's four, then they get a two extra reserves. So they'll have you know, 24 men available if they like. So in this case, the Raiders only had the one returning from Origins, so they don't get any extra reserves. So that's where they can you know, name, you'll see a bunch of the teams later on in the team list that have named multiple Origin guys all in the reserves. And you know, they're all a, good, all a decent chance of backing up. Some may not, some may, um, but they're allowed to carry a few a few extra players that you know most likely aren't gonna play, but if they need, to, if they need them to, uh, they're allowing it because, you know, obviously it makes sense with, with Origin coming up. They, they don't know how our guys are going to back up or how they're going to feel or if there's any injuries or suspensions and everything that comes along with it. So that is definitely something to be thinking about. Anyway, on that Raiders side of the ball, obviously Joe Tarpany in the 13 role again is very, very important. They keep Corey Horsburgh in the edge spot. The thing with, you know, Corey Howard and Ira going down is it just allowed, uh, you know, Corey to, to Horsburgh anyway, to stay in that position with the young Hudson coming back on that left-hand side. You know, if Corey Howard and I uh, was okay to play, then you'd expect him to be named in that edge position and, you know, Horsburgh to come through the middle. But, you know, Silo there and, you know, Papa Lee had massive games and they can definitely do that again with Tarpane playing big minutes. So it's very interesting if, you, if you're looking at, you know, Tarpane there, he can, he's has the ability to score 60 plus pretty easily now with the minutes that he's going to be getting. So you look at this interchange as well, it's Starling, Gula. Frawley and Mariotta. So you'd imagine lower minutes for Mariotta, sort of in that 20-25 max. Gula will get the bigger minutes as the, the bench middle forward. And then it's, you know, Matt Frawley there. That's, you know, where's he going to play? You know, is he going to play some 13 for 15 minutes for Tarpany? Or, you know, how, how is that going to play out? So really you're looking at plenty of big minutes for, you know, for Horsburgh, the 80 you'd imagine same with Young potentially, or, you know, Frawley could come in for a Young playing 65 or something like that. And, you know, taps to to play those big minutes. So just be aware of those guys. Anyone else in here? If you've got Matty Tomoko on your team, I don't think many do, but if you do, I think you need to hold on to him and hope that he comes back against a Tiger side, which I think is going to be a pretty hard one to, to select who wins this game, if, if we're being honest here. But on the Tiger side of the ball, Dream Buller comes back, a big welcome to him. Definitely have a look at Stafford Toa, and we will ex you know have a big chat about him tomorrow uh, Yeah, with uh, with Scoop there, which will be fun. Tommy Talad does get named again in the four jersey. So you know, Brent Naden is in the 18th man. So you know, I think maybe they were happy with you know, some of Tommy Talad's defense last game or anything like that, but... Still, you know, he's going to be, he still gets uh, taken off by Asuka Power. So Tommy Talao, at, at worst, you want to be looping him. You don't really want to be you know, starting him in your 17, that's for sure. If you're looking uh, down the line there, it's really, it's Isaiah Papali'i, it's John Bateman, and, you know, David Clemmer is also someone to look at, but I, I just don't see his, him as an option yet until he could get a little bit cheaper or he gets bigger minutes. I just see Bateman and Papali'i being about on par in terms of your selections and, and who you might want to choose in your side. Um, before I would go for Clemmer, especially there. So that's that one. That's that first game there. Let's go to Warriors Dolphins. And the Warriors see a few guys return, which is good news for them. So Metcalf keeps his spot. They do get Wade Egan back, which is very, very helpful. Dylan Walker returns as well, along with Mitch Barnett. So if you're looking at guys like Jackson Ford, I don't think that changes too much. I think Mitch Barnett will play a little bit more through the middle. You know, Fenua Blake might not have to play the huge minutes. I'm not sure if, you know, Toho Harris will play massive minutes, but I really doubt that Barnett takes too many more than sort of the 30 or 40 that Tom Ale was getting, who moves back to the reserves. I don't really see too much changing there. So at least for this week, not a not much of a worry, but maybe sort of from round 17, you know, he could get back to some, you know, 
really strong minutes through the middle, which is where he was playing through the first bunch of games before he did get injured. Harris there, we spoke about, you know, obviously, obviously a great purchase last week. I'm not sure if you pick him up again this week with their buying 16. Yeah, I think last week was the week to get him. He still has a decent amount of cash to be made. He should be a keeper long term. So I'd understand why you'd still look at him for sure. Dolphins, they have not named Hammer. They've also not named Tom Gilbert. They are not anywhere to be seen. So they will get a rest completely after Origin. And this is the kind of position that you can be in, especially Wayne Bennett there. With a team that's doing really, really well, and they're, they're firmly placed in the top eight there. And as I said, that's exactly what you can do and you know, rest those type of guys so you can have them at the important end of the season rather than having them you know, back up, and especially a couple of days later, 3 p.m. It's only two and a half days after Origin. Um, yeah, when it, with the finishing, you know, nine, ten, uh, sorry, yeah, nine thirty, ten o'clock Sydney time, and uh, yeah, celebrations and whatever else after that um, to be ready for this three p.m. Saturday game is, is pretty tough. So I can understand why they move. Uh, you know, they leave got those guys out. Milford and Katoa keep their spot. So Milford, interesting again, but you know, you also don't find out what would happen if you know Hammers back in one and what they do with Nikarima and Katoa and Milford. So it's pretty hard to even go for him. Nikarima keeps the one jersey, so you can hold on if you like. Uh, but with the you know the forwards there, again, not too much to talk about there. You, you can you know, keep hold of of Ray Stone, which is nice. Tafade is still in the interchange, so yeah, definitely not ideal for anyone who owns him. If he gets on for another few minutes again, he might lose some of that cash that he that he made over the first you know, over his first game that double that he scored. Connolly Lemuel is still a solid pickup. Let's go Titans Rabbitohs. And in this one, guys, we have, do have a, a debutant, I believe. Uh, Keanu Guinea there, who, okay, who will play fullback with Kieran Foran going down uh, injured. Finally, they, they give him a chance to have a rest because he had a, a cooked toe. So, yeah, not good. He's just played through it. And you know, now he's going to get a few weeks off so he can recover from that. Jaden Campbell moves to the six. And there's still no sign of AJ Brimson. Uh, not even in the reserves either. So, you know, over the next few weeks, he could potentially be back, but not right now. And they're going for Keeney there in the fullback position. Campbell being at six, he, he might kick a little bit, but I don't think that changes too much for Tanner Boyd. If, uh, if Sexton was returning, then that would be a little bit of an issue for Tanner in his kicking game. But, you know, considering when Sexton had, you know, control of this side last time, he did all the kicking and Boyd basically didn't at all. So that was um, interesting to watch. And, yeah, that were, that were the fun days before Tanner Boyd just started killing it, that's for sure. Someone I didn't mention in the round 14 targets list, guys, it's actually Mo Fodder Waker there uh, as a potential option with only one buy remaining. Obviously, it's in 16 is why I didn't you know, completely rush out to, to look at him, uh, but he's definitely one of those good middle forwards that you know, isn't currently in the origin, origin picture. He'd be you know, close to it, someone like you know, similar to Horsburgh, you know, being a little bit closer to it, but not one of those guys that's right on the cusp right now, I'd imagine. And yeah, they've got Felice Cafusi coming back. There's a few different options there, uh, but he yeah, he's a solid one there for sure. Tino has been named to back up along with Fafita, but again, it's very early. And if they both play big minutes in Origin, you know, maybe they play, maybe they do play this game because it's an important one against the Bunnies, but it could be under you know, less minutes there for sure. So definitely, um, yeah, for feet or someone you're going to want on your side, but I, I doubt that he plays the full 80 here if he plays good minutes for Queensland tomorrow night. So let's go to Bunnies here, and Blake Taft keeps his spot in the fullback position with Latrell being out. So if you do own Latrell, unfortunately, he will be a sell uh, coming into this one. You'd imagine that you know, he probably misses the next two, 14, 15, and would be back for Origin in 16 when they have their buy anyway. And then he has a buy. He would be out 19. He would be out 20 as well with their second rebuy. And have one later in the year. So, yeah, really, he's going to be missing sort of five or six games in the next, what, eight game, eight, eight weeks or something. It's just not good enough. And then they have a bye, you know, later in the later in the um, in the season. So, not good for him. Uh, Richard Kenner comes into the wing. Again, not really an option. Johnson, Tass, both okay. But, yeah, a bit too late for any of these bunnies, guys, as you were seen in my last video. Holding on to Totola. Sele, up to you what you want to do with him. Uh, the interchange looks strong. Obviously, Shaq Mitchell, Cheekam, Arrow, Salute for Fita. Pretty good there. Host keeps his spot, but I think he's a sell. And, uh, you know, Cooks there is a potential option for sure, guys, if you're looking at him. And uh, Totola, as I said, is a hold there. Murray uh, has been named to return. Um, yeah, but we'll see what happens with that. If, uh, you know, they will have these extended squads that, you know, they could bring in, you know, Talis Duncan or, or whoever they want to, uh, like, you know, did a job last week. Let's go to Sharky's Broncos, and in the Sharky side, we see Hines being named, and, and most likely he will play, and, and you know, good chance that he will be my captain 
in this one, even though it is against the Broncos. We'll, um, we'll have to see how that plays out. And just make sure, guys, that you do have, uh, if you are captaining one of these guys that's backing up, make sure you do have your vice on someone in the early games or maybe, you know, in that first game, if you can. It's going to be pretty difficult, I'd say, with like the Raiders and, and uh, you know, the, the Tigers. Maybe it's a Tarpany or, or a Horsbro or something like that that you could captain. Uh, vice captain, sorry, just to, to make sure that you know you actually get a double points if uh, one of those guys happens to be a laid out, and that's probably the other thing as well. That, you know, do you captain a, a Cleary? You know, given he's obviously the last game, but do you captain him with a chance that he may not back up? You know, if you, if you if you're thinking maybe you know if he wasn't to back up in this game, do you do you trade him on? If it looks like he's not going to be a regular backup, you know, guy that backs up, do you trade him on and get him back later? There's a few question marks there. Similar to that of Heinz, you know, you want to be able to trade these guys if they uh, do happen to be out. But, you know, with them playing, what, the fifth game, fifth, fourth, fourth game of the of the round of, you know, seven games available, it's going to be very hard to sort of trade out this late. And especially, you know, with with Panthers being the last game, you could probably go like Cleary to, to Dill Edwards or something like that, but that's about it. So that's definitely something to think about there for sure. Other than that, the, uh, the team is very much the same. We still don't see Cam McInnes yet, which you know, very much fair. We you know, we don't expect him to be anywhere near it. Tracy comes out for Talakai. So yeah, as well as Tracy played, he's out. Broncos have named their full squad. So exactly the, the squad that they played with in round 12 before you know, they lost their origin guys for last week. So they've all been named to back up, but they do have you know two extra reserves, which is what I was talking about there. So Sailor and Madden are still in there, along with you know, Corey Oates potentially will come into this side at some point especially with Cobo being named as, you know, if, if Oates is ready to go, I'd say he'll come in for Cobo. There's a lot of different question marks around, you know, Walshy and you know, Carrigan and also House. But great news that all of those guys have been named. Very different to the teams that we're going to go through in a second. So Roosters and the Dogs. Great news here on this front. The Billy Smith has been named. You know, he didn't get dropped. That's good. Teddy has been named as well. Awesome. Joey Manu in six. So amazing news overall. If you're looking at Jake Turpin, guys, he's definitely a solid pickup. I mentioned, you know, a bunch of these roosters as good options coming into this week. Angus Crichton keeps his spot on the bench. So keep an eye on him for, you know, potential cash drops. And then he could uh, potentially, you know, drop into your side at some point. But yeah, Turpin's going to be that guy that should get decent minutes. Hacho could come in and spell him a little bit. But, you know, Turpin has also played 80 minutes across his career with the Broncos before he came here to this team here. But Daniel Tupo is in the 18th man spot. And Jackson Barlow there has actually been dropped. So... Junior, I just didn't actually see that until now, but Junior pa Pango there, Pago, Paga. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna butcher that. But yeah, someone teach me that one again. Uh, I'd appreciate it. But um, yeah, so he comes in and Jackson's been dropped. So you know, for uh, the first month when he absolutely dominated, uh, he's now out of the squad with Corey Allen and and Junior there taking over. So they still aren't picking Suali'i on the wing. Crazy. So they obviously, yeah, I don't know, don't have another center maybe. The, you know, the all wingers that they, they, they've caught there. So yeah, crazy, 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 crazy. Uh, Kiri keeps his spot and yeah, nothing else changes for the Roosters on the dog side. TPJ has been named in the reserves. So TPJ and Adokar, they're both in the reserves. So they you know, could potentially come in and play. And look, I don't think there's any, you know, will he play, won't he play? I, I don't see it sort of as a thing, like compared to if they were named at the start of the season compared to being on the reserves. I don't see it as being a big difference is what I mean. Um, yeah, if they're ready to play, if they're good, like if TPJ comes out and plays 30 minutes, then of course he's going to play here. Like, Adokar's a little bit different. He's coming off an injury. He's only had that sort of one game before being picked in Origin. So, you know, if he is completely fine, then sure, he might come in and play, but that's that might be the reason why. I, but, you know, for Tavita to be potentially a 30-minute guy um, off the bench or starting for the Blues, to, for him to put him in the reserves, I just don't see that as an issue either way at all um yeah which is that some people look at karaz that's one i actually forgot to mention in the last last video as well um he's getting really cheap and you know, hope that that week off you know gave him some time for his knee to improve and get better blake wilson's in that spot so he will come out for adokar if that's the, the case there ryan sutton returns as well so i actually think that sato is one of those guys that could definitely um come out for you know to beat a Big news here, actually, is that J uh, Jaden Ockenbaugh has actually been named in on the edge, and, and he's a very, very interesting prospect, and uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see if he actually can get some type of dual position, but I doubt it, considering he's been playing through the middle, 
and he's listed as a fullback, a wing fullback, and now he's playing on the edge. I just don't see him getting any type of dual position, but that is very, very interesting that, you know, they're definitely turning him into a middle forward slash edge, and with Corey Waddell being moved to the 13 role, they kind of played with Sam Hughes there last game, and, you know, he got taken off early. Harrison Edwards played the rest of the game. I can't see a, a, a way that Harrison Edwards plays big minutes in this one. Now, with Corey Waddell being a good, strong, big minute guy, he did have a bit of a shocker last week. I, I wouldn't be surprised if there are changes to this final team, you know, like there was last you know, last time they played in round 12. And, and you know, Ockenball becomes an interesting kind of, you know, discussion topic this week. And, and Scoop and I will go through him tomorrow. And just on face value, it, it becomes very interesting. He's a very sort of awkward lowish awkward price so you know definitely low enough that he if he gets the the job and the role that we that we hope then he could make a lot of money and score well and you know plays around 16 um obviously you know misses 17 but plays 19 and, and stuff like that as well and this week obviously in, in the forwards and you know he's playing on the, off the interchange big minutes and now he gets a start so he's really obviously impressed so that's kind of my general synopsis on him to kick things off but yeah there's a few reserves there that could come in and you know, take that spot for sure Let's go to Cowboys and the Storm. So a couple more to go here. And in this one here, Drinky, obviously one of the, probably only one of the guys in the uh, the, the Cowboys there that I would look to select. Laybutt keeps his spot in the centers. And we do see our boys on the bench, uh, on the reserve, sorry. So Jason Tamalolo, is, uh, he's in there and you know, could potentially come back, but he was in the, listed in the reserves last week. So they're obviously not too excited about you know, where he's at. Holmes, Cotter, and also Talangi are on the, in the reserves. So they could definitely come in and play. But if they don't, they'll line up very similar to last week. Dearden definitely will play considering he's 18th man here. And then you know, good news for, for Helam Luki with our, our man Jeremiah Nanay. He is uh, on the interchange still. Uh, yeah, on, on his return, he comes into the interchange position. Jakey Granville gets the start again. So incredible that, yeah, he actually played really, really well last week. I was impressed by him. Lucy Leilua gets the start. Yeah, that could change again with Goz, uh, you know, or potentially Nanai coming in and uh, in, in stealing that spot for sure. But yeah, Luki's spot looks fairly safe, I'd say, with Leilua being able to play middle and also edge. So, you know, um, we'll, we'll find out about that one when it comes. And the Storm side, we, we've got Nick Meany at the back. S spoke about him as a, like a half an option, to be honest. No, nothing much more from that. All of their origin guys have been named in the starting side, which is, is great news. But you know, obviously with a Sunday game, it gives them an extra day or so to recover. Then a couple of these other teams. Grant is there. So good news if you've held on to him. Welch, obviously starting. He's only in the extended for... Uh, Origin, Trent Leoro, like myself, uh, owned by myself there. He's a good hold. Eli Katoa, definitely a solid purchase. He's been named. Great news. And hopefully that week off was great for his AC joint. You know, a, a very much a welcome uh, addition there. You know, for, for him to to get that to get that rest with with the injury that he that he had there. Now this is the big news, guys. Jack Bird has not been named, so he's been rested. Big thing here is they actually had ten days between matches. They had a th uh, Thursday match and then the Sunday one here, and it's still not enough for his knee to get better. So. That's bad. That's really bad news because there's a good chance then that he won't play round 15. Like, why would you, if you're going to rest him now, yeah, they rested him two weeks ago. He then played last week, still wasn't great. He got a 37. Look, it's fine. But, you know, to then be rested now, they would then play, you know, have a game in 15 and then have a bye in 16. I think there's a high chance that he doesn't play next week. And if he does, like, is he going to be back to full health? Yeah, then he could you know, re-injure it again. And all physio is not excited at all by you know, what the news is here. For those that were saying, I think he was against Dolphins. Yeah, it was. The first game was against Dolphins. Uh, he was actually there, Brian Sini, uh, at that game. Uh, he's a, like a season ticket holder. He loves his Dolphins. So he actually saw the the, the, um, the doctors and, and the physios going through some exercises with him. And he looked in you know, a lot of pain. So it's not good news for, for someone like Bird, who's obviously just a, a workhorse, just just helpful though they can bump people off he's a strong boy um so for him to have, be having some issues and not look happy at all is, is not great news so that's a big thing with bird i think he's probably a sell now which is very very frustrating jack de Bellin, a, a great uh, captaincy last week in the end after the simbin big news here is uh metal Casilla and uh well couchman's actually out of the squad moses envy is out of the squad like he was a couple of weeks ago 
Um, but Ben Rob still have been moved back to the bench. So for those that held on to Ben and also Couchman into round 13, it worked out great last week because Billy Burns wasn't selected. Jaden Sewell was out uh, out with his injury. So both of those guys got to have good minutes and, and obviously score good points with Couchman going over for a try and Medoc Pasilla getting the, the high 40 score. So that was great. Sewell returns. I don't think he's a purchase. The only guy I'd be looking at here. Uh, obviously, is Birdie is potentially a sell, and then Jacob Little as potentially a buy. So, have a look at him in you know in in strong detail there, um, and you can make a decision on him just based on the amount of cash you have available and you know what you might do with Bird. I know he's you know, sort of eighty five percent owned in the top five thousand, so everyone has him, which is good. But if you're uh, like myself and trying to save the odd trade, then it's a bit of a, a bit of an annoying one, but it kind of forces our hand a little bit, I think. And I have a lot of centers and wing fullbacks now, so. Yeah, I think it kind of forces the hand a little bit. And look, Bird being out, it kind of gets me a little bit excited for someone like Dylan Edwards, to be honest with you. So could definitely look at him, could look at Ockenbore as well. Yeah, some interesting you know, potential option there. Options there with, you know, Edwards being able to help for, help for round 16 and stuff like that. We'll work it out. But all the uh, Panthers guys have been named. This is, you know, 6.15 on Sunday, you know, four days after, almost four complete days after Origin. So very good news. Uh, in that sense, 96 hours it'll be. Is that correct? Yeah, almost 96 hours um, you know, after Origin. I think that, that they'll be fine to back up if, you know, again, none of them get come out with any niggles. Um, you know, if they get a win on the board, or you know, I think it, probably if they get, would it be better or worse if they get a win or a loss? I feel like if they get a loss, they'll want to come out and, and dominate this game. And this is a game where you want Cleary to be backing up. Um, yeah, obviously not after worrying about Hosking or Sorensen. They're both sort of solid options, guys, as as I said in the most previous video. Liam Martin's still a bench guy. I think he'll, you know, he'll play decent minutes in origin. So will, you know, Isaiah will play big minutes as always. Fisher Harris is a solid option, guys, but, you know, coming off a low one, he'll have a high break even there. So that's something to think about. To all, and, and your name to play. Um, yeah, Edwards is the guy I'm looking at here. And hopefully... Nathan Cleary plays. So that's all the big news for team list for round 14, guys. I, I wish you all the best of luck heading into that round. And yeah, obviously good, uh, enjoy Origin tomorrow. Um, yeah, we'll get out our you know, buy, hold, risk it, sell sometime tomorrow morning. Um, yeah, and leave and leave his to it. And you can have plenty of fun with that one as long as my, as well as my super coach update as well. And then we'll kind of, you know, I'll wait till Origin is done and all the fallout Thursday morning. Uh, we obviously has, we have yeah, a bit more time actually, which is good. So, we have until Friday to, to do um, our, our reviews on, on how things are playing out and our, our, our Q&A, obviously the, the team's analysis and then yeah, my trades and and I'll do a little bit of a, a fallout from from Origin Chat and, and my, my discussions and my thoughts on the game and how it was. So yeah, good luck this week, guys. Enjoy Origin and we'll see you soon.